Hi guys, this is EEPROM Experimentation Part 3. In the first and second parts I was working with an experimental board just to test out writing some addresses and reading from them, but I'm really interested in a 1 megabyte EEPROM. Uh, I also showed uh, an experimental board that could uh, dump an EEPROM out into the air just through LEDs, but uh, the device as it is here doesn't do anything with the data that's extracted from the EEPROM other than show it to you. As explained in an earlier video, I'm interested in writing a new EEPROM to support the CD32 debug board and I have a new CD32 console on the way to experiment with because I don't want to risk the two that I have. I'm planning some other projects in future. The top proto board has been upgraded here so that the DS pick that's on the board can receive and send data to and from the EEPROM across a 16-bit bus, the same bus that the LEDs display. In the first video, this DS pick was controlling the addressing, but now it's just a big shift register and it has a program that makes it more or less compatible with a pair of 74HC595. I've upgraded the power supply with some heat sinking. It's not quite finished. I might add another uh, piece of aluminium angle to the top of that. Um, but this one I want to save to use as a general purpose power supply. Uh, three linear regulators. That's the battery connection and then 5 volt and 3.3 .3 to 3.6 volt. And then the 12.5 volt supply for the programming voltage. Over to this cheap and nasty Chinese EEPROM eraser, which I've got just in case I make some mistakes. Ideally, I won't need it at all. I just want to write an EEPROM, but uh, the EEPROM does have to be messed around with uh, first. The most obvious issue in my country is the mains cable has to be replaced for starters. Most eBay sellers quote this is working from 100 to 240 volts, which sounds fine. Uh, brand new high quality, <laughs> but there we go, 100 or 110 to 240 volts, and I don't know where they get the 6 amps from. A quick look at its guts, they've soldered straight to the tube, don't bother with a socket, and the circuit board looks a lot like a ZVS driver, it's got a rectifier there on the right hand side. I just made a parasitic connection with a scope because I suspect this is quite high voltage at low current at the tube end. It looks like a high frequency driving the tube. Uh, 25 kilohertz, which would depend on the winding of the toroid, uh, its resonant frequency. And of course when it arrived it had the mandatory broken wire and didn't work at all. It either arrived that way or this little catch that stops the draw coming out broke some wire. Here I am varying the supply to the eraser with a variac between 110 and 240 volts and then finally wind it down to 0 volts. So the important thing to take away from that is you can't compare your erasure times with someone in another country with a different main supply. I've sunk to a new low. I wouldn't have done it if you could buy the raw components from my local supplier, somewhere I could just drive and get them, but these are bi-directional level shifters, so they can convert back and forth from 5 volt to 3.6 volt, or whatever the low supply happens to be. And I need level shifters for the 16-bit bus on the uh, middle board, what has now become the middle board, uh, so that I can talk back and forth from the EEPROM to the top DS pick. I mentioned that this DS pick is now just running a program to make it a shift register, but it's a special shift register because it can work in both directions, from serial to parallel and parallel to serial, because it has to write to and from the EEPROM. And that's the top and the middle board done. There's a lot of interconnects to keep both removable chips on top. So now we need a microcontroller to control the whole thing and read and write to and from an SD card. And there's the start of that board and there's the finish of that board. Um, I just used the same library and configuration as was previously used in my last project. So uh, I knew everything would work with the same code. I could have just used a bigger microcontroller, but these are free samples, so I really got them for free. Really, I shouldn't be communicating between two microcontrollers. So this is what the whole setup looks like now for reading. Um, I'm not up to the writing yet. I've only dumped uh, to a file. So from the one megabyte EEPROM to a one megabyte file on SD card as a standalone uh, device with no computer intervention. I started out with bigger delays here than I really should have used. If you keep your eye on the right LED, it will blink, and that's to indicate that it's writing one kilobyte of information that it's read from RAM 
to the SD card file and then it'll go ahead and read another kilobyte into RAM. This footage was actually my first attempt at dumping an EEPROM, uh, but I calculated out that 30 seconds odd to read a kilobyte, it'll take 8 hours to dump the whole EEPROM. So I went and shortened the delays, so we're looking now at about um, a kilobyte every 3 seconds, which would still take an hour, but I think I'll leave it there. Having dumped the one megabyte file, I've used an online hex editor to compare with uh, the ROM that I've already got, or already had from an Amiga. So this is the original um, CD32 ROM, which I won't show you the whole file, I'm only showing you the first page to try and avoid trouble. But you can see me flicking back and forth from the original EEPROM to the one that I dumped, and it verifies correct. I could write that file directly back to an EEPROM the same way I read it, or I could fiddle with it to get it working in an emulator. At least when I'm finished with this one I'll know where to aim the hammer. It has been a bit of time since a good project smash, so core logic flip-flop. Non-volatile flip-flop remembers the state that it was in with the power off, as is quickly demonstrated here. And uh, I think it's time to say goodbye. Interestingly, it's still a flip-flop, just not a uh, non-volatile flip-flop anymore because I took out the cores, must not longer be connected or smashed. Anyway, let's continue.